Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. I have noticed over the years that people recommend watering the garden with water that does not have chlorine in it. The premise of this statement is that bacteria in your soil are key players in the nutrient cycle and chlorine kills bacteria. So today, I thought I would put this garden assumption to the test. The water treatment plant that provides my drinking water has been recognized as using the gold standard for water treatment. After getting the water from the North Saskatchewan River, it is initially shocked with sodium hypochlorite, or bleach. This does a great job at killing bacteria and other pathogens that may be in the water. The downside to using bleach is that once the chlorine is in contact with the water and air, it decays rather quickly. In order to keep the water safe while shipping, ammonia is added to the water creating chloramine. This essentially stabilizes the clean water until it gets to you to make sure it's safe for you to drink. It is important to note that at the concentrations these chemicals are used at to sterilize and stabilize your drinking water, they are several orders of magnitude lower than what would be considered mildly irritating to the average human. In order to test this garden assumption, we have two hypotheses. The first is that the chlorine in tap water does harm the beneficial organisms and bacteria specifically that are found within our garden soil. And the second, that although the chlorine may harm them, they will bounce back in populations relatively quickly. In order to test these two hypotheses, we have sent a number of samples to Maxim Analytics for analysis. We used standard sterilized equipment that was provided by the lab in order to prevent contamination. For all soil samples, a sampler was used that measures 0.5 grams of soil and was placed in 200 milliliters of deionized water. Deionized water is pure water with absolutely nothing else in it. Fresh gloves were used every sample to prevent contamination. Following the sampling, all containers were firmly sealed and placed in a cooler. It is expected for hypothesis one that the treated soil will have fewer bacteria than the untreated control. Sample one is the control, where I sampled a representative area of soil after having removed the mulch layer. Sample two was the same area after having been watered thoroughly using tap water through a standard garden hose sprayer. Sample three was submitted in order to understand what happens in extreme situations. I placed untreated soil in a sample of 200 milliliters of fresh tap water. If tap water is harmful, we should see the lowest number of bacteria in this sample. Hypothesis 2 should show that the same sample six hours later will have a higher number of bacteria than the initially treated sample. Sample 4 was a separate treatment area from samples 1, 2, and 3, but still representative of the same conditions. The sample was placed in the water and care was taken to keep the temperature similar to the soil. This lets me best replicate soil conditions if a rebound of bacteria numbers are to occur. The sample was then left for six hours prior to submission to the lab with the rest of the samples. Chlorine evaporates when it comes in contact with air. So if you leave it out in a watering can like this or use a hose nozzle that sprays it, it should help to evaporate the chlorine. In order to get a better understanding of what actually hits my garden, we sent in three more samples for chlorine analysis. Sample five is fresh tap water. This will let us establish what the initial levels of chlorine are after being delivered to our homes. Sample six was tap water that was 12 hours old and should show a drop in concentrations of the chlorine content. This sample was treated similar to sample four. Sample seven is fresh tap water collected after having been sprayed from a garden hose similar to watering a garden. This should show the volatilization that occurs when tap water is used in a garden. Soil bacteria concentrations were counted using a plate count technique. After having consulted a number of experts, there is an expected error rate of plus or minus 300. So if the numbers are within 300 of each other, they're considered a duplicate. All units of measurement are in colony forming units per milliliter. Did treating garden soil with tap water kill our bacterial colonies? The control had a result of 920 and the initially treated area had a result of 1000. This does not support our hypothesis as these results are nearly identical.
After six hours, sample four had a result of 1100. That would be considered identical to both the control and the initially treated area. Does the extreme situation of sample three, where we took the soil sample and placed it directly into fresh tap water, show a decline? It had a result of 1200, so once again, we are within the error rate, and this is considered identical to the control. So what does this all mean? Our results suggest that at least consistently across Canada, tap water does not have a negative effect on the bacteria found within our garden soils. Although we've established that the chlorine found in tap water does not harm the bacteria in garden soils, what levels of chlorine are actually coming out of the tap, and does leaving it out in a watering can or using a sprayer help to dissipate that chlorine? All results are in milligrams per liter. Sample 5 was our fresh tap water and had a reading of 2.0. In order to see if the results are statistically different, we used a real percent difference analysis. Sample 6, that had been sitting out for 12 hours, had a reading of 1.4, and does look like a lower number than the fresh tap water number of 2.0. However, they are considered to be statistically the same. Sample 7, from the end of my fairly standard garden hose, had a reading of 1.3, and again was not statistically different from fresh tap water. It would likely take a few days for the rest of the chlorine to completely evaporate along with any remaining ammonia. I am confident that with these results, using tap water in my garden does not reduce the number of bacteria in my soil. In light of this, I feel comfortable continuing to water my garden with tap water when needed, without removing chlorine through filtration or evaporation. Other water treatment plants may use different techniques or chemical concentrations, and that may affect different garden soils in different ways. In order to apply today's findings to a larger area, we would need to replicate this experiment a few more times. The first Friday of every month, I am going to reserve for this series on testing garden assumptions, where we take a look at different methods, products, and techniques, and put them to the scientific test. Make sure to check out the last video in this series where we investigated if Epsom salt is beneficial in organic gardening. Next time, we are going to take a look at tea and tea leaves as a potential organic fertilizer source. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.